like hard and I pull with the three Most of these people they hating on me I don't know why, that's just how I be Got these bands up in my pocket Yeah, your bitch, she needs to stop it I ain't Hello you guys, welcome back to today's video It is actually happy President's Day today um, we are expecting a lot of snow, so I did not, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry you guys. Anything like I that. Don't. So, I am not going to be showing myself today, but what I am going to be doing is this, um, palette, and I'm going to show you guys how to Some do it. Some of you may be interested in doing a face chart, and most of you probably aren't interested in doing a face chart, but I figured after I added the music and things like that, maybe this could be something to help, um, you relax. Because I know when I watch people doing makeup or face charts videos, it's pretty relaxing. So I've been talking for 43 seconds, not bad. Let's get started with the um, face chart tutorial. The first thing that I did was, is I got my palette here. This is for MAC. This is very nice to use because it um, saves me a lot of trouble from having to use different color palettes or not palettes, but powders. So this particular one is a contour palette for medium to dark skin tones. If you have a light palette, that will work fine because this is white paper and light colors will show up on white. What I am going to personally be doing though is using this, I'm gonna start with this color right here. This is one of the lightest colors in the palette. And what we're gonna do with this is we are going to start going around the face of the chart. So, um, I'm gonna have to be at different weird angles because I don't wanna move the paper around too much because I want you guys to be in frame. So I'm just gonna move myself around. But anyway, what you do is you start at the rim of the face, so just straight through here. You get a semi-fluffy brush that looks like this. It's not totally fluffy, but it's not flat either. And you are just going to trace around the face with your light color. So just continue to trace around. Some people like to pull like this. They pull their shadow out like that. Other people prefer to go in circular motions, kind of like this. I feel like I do both techniques. Um, I'll switch off from whatever works best. What I don't suggest though, is using brushes that really mean a lot to you. I personally have brushes that I only use on face charts. Uh, I use on face here. charts. So I have pencils in here, I have a little bit of markers, and I have brushes. The reason being, the reason why I prefer those brushes over my actual uh, face brushes is because sometimes they can get a little bit um, tattered and messed up. Okay, so after... <laughs> to do is get that same fluffier brush we were using this one here and I'm gonna use this shade right here this is the second lightest to darkest tone so you're gonna get that and you're going to go again around your face chart <laughs>
chart pretty much done. We did the darkest color on the side of the face. Um, I noticed my camera was not going while I was doing it, but I will kind of just do it again really fast so you guys can see me. But you just get the darkest color in your palette, which is this guy. And you just outline the side of the face. You're going on top of those other dark or those other lighter browns. The reason being you're doing this is because you're giving some curvature to the face. It's just gonna make it look more realistic when your face chart is complete. It's like a, a roadmap to follow. And you just make little hairs kind of like this. When we go back with the powder, it'll look much more realistic. Right now, I'm just trying to sketch, you know, just a little something out. of different base charts like for eyes and I thought they were super inspiring like look how pretty those are I was thinking maybe um, we could do one of like one of these looks or something similar but they were just really really inspiring wouldn't that be so beautiful so pretty right okay so what I want to do though in order to start the eyes is I brought a couple of palettes. I wasn't sure what to start with, but I'm definitely gonna start with soft brown because soft brown is definitely a go-to for a transition color. And I wanna start my transition color. So I'm going to go back with the fluffy brush that looks like this. And I'm just gonna put that to the side there. I don't think I'm gonna do that exact look or anything, but I'm just gonna get some inspiration I'm just taking my soft brown I'm dusting off the I'm just gonna start from over here and just go like this and just go in circular motions around the eye bed so around the crease just like you would do with regular eyeshadow you will start with your crease I'm gonna do the same on the face chart so I'm gonna get some more color, you dust it off. And again, I'm just gonna go starting this way. And I like to work in circular motions. It's just a little bit easier. I feel like it places the color down really nicely. And yeah, it's just a lot easier to work with when you do it like so. Hey guys, sorry my camera stopped recording when I did the right eye, but now that I'm doing the left eye, I'm doing a halo effect, so I'm using the darker purple color in the inner outer parts of the eye, and then what I'm doing now is just blending it through the crease of the eye. So you're kind of going to want to make a half moon shape, and then if you go in with that really deep purple, it's actually sketched for matte you will get a really pretty eyelid. It'll make the eye look really big and open and it'll just look really nice. Right now, I'm using a brown colored pencil to do the bottom part of the eye. This is one of the few times that we will be using a colored pencil other than makeup, but I will be going back over it with um, eyeliner. So it will be a true full makeup application. So yeah, right now what I did is I wet the darker color. That way it would be really prominent. Look at the difference between the eye that has the wet shadow as opposed to the eye that doesn't. It made a huge difference. Okay, you guys, so right now I am going, like I promised, under the eye with actual eyeliner and powder. So you are just tracing all the work you did previously. It's really simple. I'm going on top with the black liquid liner for a black line. You could do this as thick, as thin as you want. I did mine pretty thin, though, to be honest. Right now I'm using the black to color in the irises of the eye. That way the eyes could be prominent. Eyes are the windows to the soul. So you want to make the eyes look very, very realistic, and that's what I'm doing right here. If you have a white liquid liner, you could go across the eyes with the white liquid liner, and it looks really pretty if you have hazy eyes. Okay, so I came back, so I brought this. This is a beautiful like shimmer glitter palette for MAC. It's called Queen Supreme. It looks like this. And I'm gonna pick a light glitter to do in the center of So I think I'm gonna do this silvery one. Uh, let me just pat it on.
out. Doesn't she look so cute? So she is totally done. So I actually finished. These are all the products I used behind the scenes. And yes, she is finally complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all way too much. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.